to say welcome um, to everybody that is joining in today. We have the amazing Curtis Broom with us. He's going to bring us some new stuff, which I'm really excited about. I do. I am going to turn this over to Curtis and then go back to my luncheon. Today is my baby girl's 16th birthday. So I'm going to, um, i got to miss out and not be live with you guys, but I'm going to watch it when I get home. But i got to go celebrate. It's her 16th birthday, Curtis. All right, girl. Thanks so much for getting us started. Sorry we had a little technical challenge, but that's okay. People can come back and watch it afterward. Thank you. All right, sweetie. See you later. Well, hey, gang. How's everybody doing? <clears throat> um, I'm just going to make a couple of other adjustments real quick, and then we're going to get ready to uh, dig in with you. The, um, apologize for getting started just a little bit late today also. We had, uh, Angel and I had a couple of technical challenges. Angel is uh, uh, magnificent, wonderful, awesome, incredible, unbelievable, and you know, technology is not necessarily um, her strong suit, which is good. It's good. It proves that um, anybody can be successful. You just got to have a heart and passion for it. Here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to talk about something today that, that is important, <clears throat> particularly as part of True Believers United group. Um, this is obviously generic. It's, it's not for any particular company. It's for everyone in every company. Um, and depending upon what company you're in, this may be a part of your culture already. Uh, it may or may not be. But we wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, the conversation, the concept, and the psychology of local meetings. Over the last, you know, decade, 15 years with the with the growth and the advent of, of uh, greater and greater technologies and the deployment of greater technologies, uh, in many cases and in many newer companies, the local meeting has uh, almost become an extinct animal. And yet it's really interesting that if you look at the largest companies in our profession on the planet, a foundational characteristic of who they are, it's who they've been since they started, and they may be older and we understand that, but it is an absolute foundational character uh, characteristic of who they are still to this day is the local meeting. Now what happens is I think that by and large everybody has a desire to become more acclimated to what we'll call the uh, microwave mentality. I want to push a button, make it happen. Push a button, make it happen. Lose weight, push a button. Get rid of wrinkles, push a button. You know, regain my youth, push a button. Get wealthy, push a button. So, I think that what happened with the advent of technology, people thought, "Gee, wow, we've got these cool things. We've got these conference calls, and then well, we've got these webinars. Oh, and then we've got these now Google." Gee, we've got social media, and I've got all these other ways to market, and I don't have to go to those stupid, silly meetings anymore. So we just won't even do meetings because with our company, you can do all this online without any meetings. And they missed the whole point. They thought that the local meetings are where new people get started. That's true. Done well, local meetings are where prospects will absolutely join your company because they're attracted to your community and they're attracted to who you are, but they'll only do that if the meeting is done properly. But the biggest reason for the meeting is so that the community can gather again. The most powerful thing about, re about continuing if you're doing it, but making sure that you're doing it properly, and re-engaging them if you're not doing it, or starting them if you've never done them, when we're going to talk about the psychology of a local meeting. We're going to show you exactly how a well-done local meeting should take place. And this same psychology could be used in any way you do anything. If you're a social media marketer, you would understand the psychology, this understanding the psychology of the history and those companies to this day are the biggest on the planet and they are driven by local meetings, weekly meetings, the good old weekly Tuesday night meeting or Thursday night meeting with the once a month Super Saturday. And we'll talk about that probably next week. But if if you have not understood the power of local meetings, then we, we can talk about that. Um, ooh, hang on a second, guys. Here's what we're doing. So we're going to talk about that. Um, ooh, I just got a message. Uh, Lisa actually had gotten tied up in something, so I was kicking off today. Here we go. Hang on a second. Oh, okay. 
Lisa got tied up. She was going to lead off. I was going to come in. She just sent me back and said, let's rearrange. We're going to rearrange just a little bit the order and sequence of information. So instead of local meetings, here's what we're going to do. Over the next three weeks, we're going to talk about what I'm going to talk about next. We're going to actually move local meetings to next week. <laughs> By the way, it is going to be critically important and very powerful, and the reason we're going to do it is the psych if you when you understand the psychology of a local meeting, you'll understand one of the greatest psychologies that builds success in network marketing. What we want to do now is we want to start with the true really or the foundation component that gets a new person started after they've enrolled. So we're going to go a little out of sequence, what one might think, where a local meeting introduces information to a potential new person. But we're going to move that off a week. I now see that um, uh, Lisa decided she wanted to start with, with what we call Hot Market First, and that's what we wanted to share with everybody. And some of you who are part of True Believers may have seen this in one of the other teaching venues. We teach so many companies, so many leadership teams. We teach so many. We teach in so many venues generically and specifically. We just got back from Norway working with a company for a month. Um, really good friends of ours. We teach at large generic events. Uh, we teach at some of the GoPro events with Eric <coughs> and all that stuff. In order to go through the psychology of the local meeting, there is a component part of that that if we show you this that thing you would want to incorporate in how you execute your local meeting. So we're going to instead step back a second. And what she's asked is let's go through hot market training first, and I'm going to draw that out for you. Then next week we'll talk about how that evolves into the prospecting, which then leads to the local meeting. And then we'll move on through that and continue in subsequent trainings. So let's do that. Well, let's step back a second. Next week we'll get into next week and beyond. We'll talk about meetings and meeting psychology, because I think the psychology is critical, even if you're just doing primarily conference calls, webinars, and hangouts. Let's step back to hot market first. Um, let me just let her know. Yes, got it. Boom. That's where we're going to start. Um, let's talk about um, human psychology, and let's talk about where you build certain foundations in your network marketing business that allow you to build giant and gigantic successful freedom towers. You know, you notice there's a lot of work that has to take place when large, tall skyscrapers get built that you don't see. It's digging way down deep and building the right foundation. If you build a foundation, you can build the tallest buildings in the world. And if you don't, then whatever you build is eventually going to fall down. The challenge for many is when they approach their network marketing business, they think they, they have the they have misunderstandings and they have um, misinterpretations. They have they were there was not the right expectation, and they have a misperception of what network marketing really is supposed to be. Network marketing, believe it or not, I know this will catch you off guard, is about marketing to your network. Hence, how they put that together. But many people think that marketing then means selling, and it doesn't. <clears throat> In fact, let's start talking. Let me bring this. Let me bring the board over. We're going to go do some board theory, so that if we kind of draw and jot this down, then you've got something to refer back to. Okay. So we're going to do some board theory here real quick. Where people make a mistake in network marketing is they seem to think that network marketing is about selling. See, the problem is sales is about selling. And selling is about selling. Marketing is not about selling. Marketing is about attracting. And I want you to think about this for a second. The only things that you really need to sell are usually bigger ticket items. For example, you sell cars, you sell homes, you sell large appliances. That needs salespeople. That needs very skilled, very talented, very capable salespeople. They have to be able to connect with a person. You know, create that, that personal GI, I think I like this person, let me listen to them. They then have to create features and benefits. They have to take you through a psychological process where they can then set it up so that if you hesitate, they can close you. They can deal and handle with objections or hesitations, and they can turn it back. They can overcome the objection, turn it back to the focus on decision, and they get something sold. That requires a great deal of skill, and the reality is a very small percentage of people feel comfortable and are good at selling. Most people hate sales. Most people hate being sold. Best salespeople don't make it feel like you're being sold, but they're extremely talented to be able to do that. Most people feel like they're being sold and don't like it. That is not network marketing, because network marketing is not typically how you move cars, homes, and major appliances. Network marketing is generally about consumer products. Why? 
Network marketing is about building a global network of consumers. And you have to understand when we say consumers, I didn't necessarily say customers, I said consumers. A distributor for a company, they consume product each month. They consume personally about a one month supply. Their mother, who supports them because they've got their cute little network marketing business, they consume about a one month supply. Their neighbor that they involved as a customer who doesn't didn't, wasn't interested in the business but wanted to try the product, they're a consumer. They consume on a monthly basis about a one month supply. Consumer products are moved through marketing and marketing doesn't, doesn't sell somebody. In fact, marketing doesn't create a customer. Marketing gets somebody to try it. Marketing causes you to want to try something. Whether you think about anything in your house, you go through your house, all the brands you see, you'll notice a bunch of them that you saw in a newspaper or a magazine, or you saw it on a television infomercial, or you saw it walking down the shelf and the store display caught your eye, or your neighbor who is a network marketer talked to you and asked you to try a product to support them in their business. <clears throat> Marketing gets you to try something. How many things have you seen? It caught your attention. You went and bought it and you tried it. Then you used it. If your product experience was good, the product experience turned you from a consumer into a customer long term. So network marketing is about marketing, not selling. Network marketing done right, you are not selling. You are marketing, people try it, they buy it, they try it, you know, they use it, and the experience turns them into a customer or doesn't. How many things have you seen, caught your attention, bought it, took it home, tried it, and eh, didn't use it again? That's what marketing is about. In network marketing, when it's done properly, it's not about selling. It's about giving people a choice. <clears throat> there are basically three markets that people have. We talk about oftentimes warm and cold. Well, this is actually inaccurate. There are three markets. Warm, we say those people who know you, and cold, those people who don't. The reality, there's a third market. There are those who know you really, 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 really well. That's called your hot market. And the hot market, the simple description of this, these are people who, here's the, here's the simple description of a hot market. Go through your phone and make a note of every single person that if you called them at 3 in the morning, if your car broke down on a deserted road, or if they called you at 3 in the morning, you would go immediately. That's your hot market. That's usually family and relatives, but it's also very, very, very close relationship friends. Okay. That's your hot market. Your, this is your most forgiving market. They also see you as the, the kid, you know, on the playground with scraped knees and, you know, always wearing holes in the knees of your jeans or the little girl in pigtails. They're always going to see you that way. They're going to see you however they've known you intimately. They will not see you as a network marketing professional. The hot market are your initial consumers. <clears throat> Because not business partners, because consumers, they will gladly be, if you do it properly, business partners, they'll try and talk you out of being because they don't see you the way you've chosen to now see yourself. Your warm market then are those that can be your business partners, but it's best if you can go to them with a story of success, not a story about possible success. And this market you should leave alone until the very end when you're very skilled. This requires a very a great deal of skill to be successful to any significant degree. So you say that to last. Let me tell you what we call the hot market and what we call the process. Here's the reality. Network marketing is business and business follows certain fundamental rules. Period. Every single business has an initial startup expense as phase one. I don't care if it's a lemonade stand, you got to go get the pitcher and the powder and the cups and you got to start your business. Okay? Phase two is the business has to get to break even. Now nobody starts a business to break even. Hey Bill, come join me in business. Let's go break even. 
well, I've got a better idea. Let's not do the business at all, and we're already we've already broken even. But it's because of phase three, which is long-term profit, that everyone chooses to start a business. But you have to get to phase two. If you never get to phase two, you're never going to get to phase three. I mean, obviously, you're going to get to phase two on the way to phase three. But this is what's important in network marketing. Why? Network marketing is primarily where the largest group of people who are n they're new to it, they don't have experience at it. This is probably the first time they've ever done anything that someone has said is business, but they didn't really make a business decision. They were sitting on the sofa watching their favorite television program or sporting event when their cousin or brother or sister called up very excited, completely out of control, because they went to a meeting with a very good, talented person drawing circles, got real excited, whipped out a credit card, and said, you need to do this same silly, weird thing that it sounds like I'm telling you did because together we'll get rich. And if the person got really excited too, then they all, they didn't really make a business decision, they got excited. The problem is the number one desire of every new person who's doing network marketing for the first time, since they don't have prior experience, no matter how great it all looked, even if they were interested enough and then became connected enough to join, deep inside they're still wondering, their number, you know, we ask what is the number one desire of a new person? We say to make money. That's really not true. That's the number one desire they say out loud. The number one desire is they want to get their money back and not feel foolish. Nobody wants to feel like an idiot and nobody wants their close people next to them to say, I can't believe you did that stupid thing. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That stuff never works. Everybody fails. That's the, it's, I can't believe you did that. Go get your money back. That's what they normally hear if we don't prepare them properly and we don't arm them properly so they can be successful. So <clears throat> instead, what needs to happen, since we are supposed to lead and we're supposed to know this stuff as more experienced individuals, we need to lead them with this in mind, that their number one real unspoken desire, but their biggest driving emotional desire is, can I get my money back? And can I do this in a way so I don't have to feel foolish my friends? The answer is yes. That's called the hot market system. And a brand new person can be successful and accomplish that desire of getting all their money back within 24 to 72 hours. And in some cases, we've had people do it in as little as one hour, maybe two hours, or maybe it's a maximum of two hours. Even if they bought, even if you're in a particular program that has physical product with larger quantities of product. Um, by the way, the hot market system works if you're in a service-related business. Usually in service-related companies, you're not purchasing multiple inventory items. You just purchase your service and then you direct other people to it. The same conversation theory will work, <coughs> but um, it operates just a little bit it operates just a little bit differently, but the same theory works where you're building an initial consumer group. But in, a, in many product businesses, it's about acquiring an initial inventory product. Again, some product businesses, I only have to acquire my initial inventory. The same theory is used to create an initial consumer group. And the reason is, if you can do that rapidly, if you're in a utility network marketing company and you, and you can acquire a lot of you know, utility consumers, you've got a success story. If you're in a product business, if you bought a large inventory package of product, and some companies are structured that way, if you could move that inventory and get all of your money back, even if you bought that thousand or twelve hundred dollar package in twenty four to seventy two hours, without any selling in a non selling way, simply giving people a choice because every time you give somebody a choice, they have two options: they can choose yes or choose no. If you stop selling, start giving people a choice. And if you could create a system that in just a couple of hours effort over 24 to 72 hour period, they could get all their money back, then you've conquered every new person's greatest initial fear. You've put them in a position of immediate success. And when you do that, then you can create huge accelerated success. So let me show you how that works. <clears throat> and then we're going to outline it. We'll go into it in more detail as we go through these, these continued hangouts in the future. But let me give you an example. Here's a timeline of a new person. This is where they're prospecting, being prospected. Okay, We're going to come back to this 
Um, th this will be a second part. We're going to do this today. We're going to talk about right here when they enroll. And we're going to talk about the hot market system. Okay? This is a methodology that can be adapted, but I'm going to talk about it primarily from for those who have the most capital involved, and that's usually a physical product business, and they bought the largest package. See, what happens is people think, well, there's an expense. You know, I bought, I had an expense of that $1,000 package. It's not really true. Yes, they did enter phase one where they do have that expense, but in network marketing, the magic is when your initial expense is that initial product inventory, as long as the product package is set up properly, and that's something we talk about later so you could, you know, you take a look and see what your company options are. But if the product package is set up properly, this actually is not an expense because if the person chooses not to continue the business, they have great product that makes a definite positive impact in their life for themselves. But we would prefer instead that instead of expense, all they did was change the state of money from capital into product. That's it. You just change the state of the money. I, took it from money, I, capital, I turned it into product, I'm just going to turn the product back into money. Why? That's business. That's typical business. But what if I could do that without selling in a non-selling way? I could turn it from money to product and back to money. That's called the hot system. In other words, it's what we like to say, what if I move product and I do that in 24 to 72 hours? Let me share with you a hot market approach. Hot market is very simple. The first thing someone does when they enroll or during the process you're sharing with them how to do this, go through the phone and literally make a list of every single person that they know who would pick them up at 3 a.m. or whom they would go pick up at 3 a.m. if they had a challenge or a problem. And what they do is they literally, there are two ways to approach it. <clears throat> there is a text approach or there is a scripted approach. And what we'll do is we'll get these scripts out so that it can be posted in the group for True Believers so everybody can go take a look through it. But let me give you an example of a call. You literally would start calling from the top of your hot market list and keep going. You don't go until you've just moved all your product. You go until you've moved the whole list. Again, you're moving the whole list and giving them a choice you're not selling. And here's the way it works. Hey, listen, um, Aunt Angel, this is your nephew Curtis. Do you have a couple of minutes? You do? Oh, great. Listen. Um, I'm, I'm almost I'm actually headed towards a meeting, so I won't take more than a couple of minutes. And Angel, I just started a home-based business. Now I'm not asking you to join it. In fact, I don't even I'm not even asking you to be a long-term customer. But I really could use your help, and it's really quick and simple. What I'd like you to do is, I over the next um, 30 or 60 or 90 days, it doesn't have to be just 30. We have people who uh, have consumers who do 90-day trials with them. But over the next you know 30 or 60 or 90 days, whatever you prefer. Um, I need, I would, I'm putting together, I need a group of 15 trial consumers who are going to as, act as real consumers. I need them to buy my product, use it for a 90 day period or 30 day period exactly as directed, and then give me feedback. That sur and, you know, simple survey and then give me feedback. At the end of that 90 days, that feedback will help me build the correct marketing and succeed. Now here's what it is. It's a phenomenal product. It's a one of a kind, special, super duper, Here's what it does, whatever your product does. It's $69 for a one month supply or $99 or $149. It makes no difference what the price is or even what the product is. And I'll show you why in a second. By the way, at the end of that 30 days or 90 days or whatever you're, you're saying to them, if you like it, I can get you an ongoing preferred customer price discount for life. If not, you never have to do it again. But the survey and feedback and your story of your initial re results will be tremendous in helping me succeed. Aunt Angel, can I count on you to be one of my 15 trial consumers or 10 trial consumers or whatever you need to move that initial product? Here's what really just happened. Number one, I called and said, I'm starting a business. I'd like your help. Okay? I'm not asking to join it. I'm not even, I'm not even asking you to commit to being a long-term customer right now. Here's what I need. I need, you know, 10 to 15 trial consumers who will buy my product, try it <clears throat> for however long you want them to try it. Some products, you know, you get the best results after 90 days. Some products, it's immediate results, whatever it is. 
but we've had people show that it makes no difference if you ask them to do it for 30 days or 60 or 90. If you go beyond 90, that's where you'll get a significant maybe hesitation. But 30, 60, 90, it works. I'd like you to buy it, try it, and give me feedback. Okay? Three, here's what it costs. Here's what it does for the benefit of it. Four, if you like it, I'll get your preferred customer discount for life. If you don't, never again. But your feedback will help me succeed. Five, can I count on you? That is the single most powerful conversation. This whole conversation, when you see the script, takes about 60 seconds. It is not selling, it is presenting a proposal. I started a business, I'd like your help, it's really simple. I want any 10 to 15 trial consumers over the next 60 days. I'd like you to buy my product, try it, and then give me your feedback. Here's what the product costs per month, here's what it does. The advantage is that <clears throat> if you like it, I'll get you a discount for life. If you don't, I'll never ask you to do it again, but your feedback will help me succeed. Can I count on you to help me succeed? What they are saying yes or no to is not the product. They're saying yes or no to your relationship. That's why your hot market are your close relationships. Close relationships, you're simply, if, if you opened a new restaurant, who would you expect to be there on opening night? Who would you be, who, who would you have been telling from the minute you decided to start opening the restaurant and started building it, who would you be telling that you're starting a restaurant? Those close relationships. Who would you have been telling for the last two months while you built your restaurant what day it was opening? Your close relationships. Who would you ask to be there on opening night so all the strangers think you're the best restaurant in town? Your close relationships. When they come in, are they going to expect you to give them the spaghetti for free? No. They're going to buy it like anybody else. If you have good food, they will become a customer because when it's time to go out for Italian food, they'll come to their friend's restaurant versus a stranger. If you don't have good food, they'll still come the first time and buy it because they're a close relationship. This is a natural human behavior and there is no training that I have to do with a new person. I just give them the 60 second script. We even have people doing it by text. Hey, Aunt Angel, I just started a business, would really like your help. It's very quick and simple. Text me to find out how. And they send that text to 60 people. We have one young lady who in 10 days sent 200 people the text. <clears throat> when they respond back, say, how can I help? I need 10 to 15 trial consumers to try my product for the next 30 days. I want you to buy it one time, try it, give me your feedback. Here's what it costs. Here's what it does. Can I count on you to be one of my 15 trial consumers? Now, if you call, you'll get 70 to 80 percent to say yes, or seven or eight out of 10. If you text, you only get five to six. But in 10 days, she had 103 people buy her $50 product. That was $5,000 of product moved. She sponsored 18 people because all of her friends, <coughs> fellow students at the university, she was a university student, who were watching her text, said, what are you doing? Oh, I'm making money. Well, how do you make money? Oh, I'm just telling people about a great skincare product that I'd like them to try and to buy from me, and they're saying yes. She sponsored 18 people. She had people say, well, how does it work? And she had them text people just to show them, we'll send the first text, if they say, ask, ask you back how they can help, send the second one. She had one girl who in 20 minutes had eight people say, sure, they buy it, and she said, well, what are the, what, how do I, what am I, what am I, what's happening? I said, well, I guess you ought to get enrolled so you can help them out. The point is this, literally within 24 to 72 hours, we've had people move $1,000 and $1,500 of product in one hour via one minute phone calls with 30 second answers, great, I'll call you later to get the order details, boom, and just go bam, 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 bam. And in one hour, they've, they've moved their whole unit of product. Here's what happens. They've suddenly, at phase two, break even. A brand new person went from enrollment with no experience, a lot of fear and uncertainty, in a couple of hours of effort following a natural human behavior 
a 60 second conversation or a couple of texts where approaching just their hot market close relationship they didn't sell them they gave them a choice and they've moved the entire set of product what's happened is now that they've moved that product they have created the most powerful thing they need to be successful going forward and that is a story of success an immediate story I've never done this before. I just got started. In just a few hours of effort, I moved thousands of dollars of product. That is a tremendously powerful story that allows a new person, when they begin to prospect, to be in a tremendously powerful position. Look at what I personally actually have just done. Look at what I just did. Look at how I did it. Look at how amazing it is. Can you believe that I, who have never made anything work, was able to do this? That's the power of the hot market system. It is a way. Now, if someone was in a service, hi, Aunt Angel. Listen, I just started a business. I'm not asking you to join it. But here's what I do. Let's say someone's in a utility business and they need somebody to convert their electric bill. Um, I started working with a company that is, is all they do is they take control over your electric usage billing. Nothing changes, your lights don't go off, but I believe their programs are so advanced they could save you a lot of money. At the very least, can I count on you to give me your electric bill so that we can do an analysis and see if we can save you money? Because Aunt Angel, I'd really like to help you out if I can. Can I count on you to do that for me? And in a matter of just a few minutes of calls, they could get 15, 20, 30 people because they're a close relationship and you didn't try and pitch them on a business, you didn't sell them, say, sure, take a look at my bill. And if you have a good service, you're done. You've created a great initial group of consumers. So um, anything, the system is the same. The advantage for product companies where you've in initially got a large amount of product or if someone started with one of the smaller product packages and you'd like them to upgrade to a larger product package, we've had circumstances where people really were financially not in a position. They literally called their hot market. They got commitments within an hour or two to move the entire set of product, went around and collected all the people who were local. We had one individual who literally in one hour and a half he contacted, got eight people to say yes, ran around, picked up the $75 check from each of them, which included shipping, to try the product. That was $600. The initial package was $560. So in one hour, he moved the product, boom, went around, picked up the checks, went and bought the package, product showed up, just went and handed it out to everybody. Everybody was happy. He'd started a business. He had a phenomenal story and was able to start building a team, and he didn't have any money to get started. It's the power of the action. It's not the order of the process. It's the power of the process. In a hot market system, engage close relationships. This is a type of conversation. We'll get those scripts to you. So that's what we want to do is, <clears throat> sorry, we started to go into local meetings. This will all lead into the entire conversation over the weeks ahead, which lays the foundation. So that through True Believers United, regardless of your company, we're going to talk to you about things that are fundamental and universal truths that are, are the types of things that not just the quick flash in the pan, recent new company, newbie millionaire or big dollar earners or six-figure earners just kind of stumbled across by just shoving mass activity. This is about foundational, stable, residual retention true long-term residual wealth creation philosophy. The types of things that go back decades in our profession. Today, the technologies are about getting information distributed, but there is still, it is a business of people. People are people, and they're just the same people today that they were forever. There are natural human desires and needs. There are natural human behaviors. And it is what it is. And if you learn and understand these simple steps and behaviors, and if you incorporate these in your businesses, the greatest lifeblood of your future are brand new people getting started today and the new people they will introduce. But your new people have the least experience, the greatest fear and uncertainty, and the greatest hesitancy at, at, at wondering if they made a wrong decision. 
before that wrong decision fear can overcome their excitement and enthusiasm and take them out of the game, immediately, immediately within their first couple of hours, have them engage in activity that works every single time by anyone who follows it precisely. And we'll take the precise way, you know, uh, methodology and we'll get those scripts, we'll uh, get them over to uh, Angel, they'll plug them into the group in the group resource areas and you'll have it. So this is the first part. <clears throat> so we're getting a little ahead. When someone enrolls, what do they do first? When you understand that, we're going to use this to then go back to part of the prospecting environment, which is not just the webinars and the hangouts and the conference calls, those are all critical, but how to incorporate local meetings into doing that, but how the whole mindset, the whole human behavior mentality of the process is built upon the foundation that if you get new people engaged in creating a personal success story quickly, their confidence goes through the roof. There is so much more they still need to learn to be able to have more significant success. But the initial success, which drives, it, and it's not that it's a, a lot of profit, it's just moving the, the product, getting the money returned. <clears throat> or if they're in a service business, they didn't have a lot of capital outlay, creating the consumer base which gives them that confidence uh, that internal emotional confidence is then compounding on that that leads to everything else. So there you go. That's what I'm, <clears throat> I'm glad I got the uh, the text from Lisa. So I know we started to go off one direction, but because uh, we were really, the two of us were really going to invert, she was going to be starting, but um, due to something that came up, I'm starting. So started to head off a little. I started to get to phase two and three before we got to phase one. So she sent back. So here we start. We'll talk. Start moving then into the prospecting process next week, <clears throat> and how all of that you know in, incorporates. Then as we talk over the weeks ahead, we'll talk about all of the prospecting process. This is a one-time thing. That, by the way, this is something a new person does one time. They don't do it once a week. They don't do it once a month. They don't do it once a year. A brand new person does this one time in their entire career within your company, whether it's a product or service, they establish that initial consumer group. If it's a product with capital outlay, they've gotten their money back. If it's a service business, they've established that the consumer groups can be created. And no one can ever tell them again that it can't be done. So you created a story of success and personally instilled greater confidence with that. That's where you create great power going forward. So there you go, gang. <clears throat> Hope that was of value. And then from that, we'll build into everything else that we go through. Um, as we continue uh, over the weeks ahead, we're really excited about uh, being a part of helping coach and guide this group, uh, the True Believers Group United. I mean, that's what Lisa and I are. We suffer from TB. We've said it from stages all over the world. We have TB, True Believerism, and we truly believe that uh, our profession is the last great hope uh, for you know the American dream domestically and the global dream for people in countries all over the world because we're all the same. We just want an opportunity to do something that allows us to have great flexibility and control of our lives and our destiny so that we can create a greater future for those that we love and care about the most for generations to come. So thank you all very much. Hope it was of value. And then uh, we'll keep building on this as we go forward. So take care, everybody. Have a great week, and we'll see you again next week. And again, sorry for the technical challenges getting started. But again, they'll, uh, we'll post the links, so the replay links and the stuff so people can get back to it, and that way everybody can see it. Uh, see it, uh, the replay of all this, and then we'll make sure that we get all the technical challenges overcome so we don't have any of those in the future. Thanks so much, and uh, goodbye for now. Bye-bye.